All right, we're recording, please go ahead. Hey, it's 6.30 p.m. and today is the uh, 13th of May and uh, I'm gonna call a meeting of the Town Services and Outreach Committee meeting to order. Um, this is an unusual um, meeting in that it is uh, being conducted as a listening session. And I will explain the process of the listening session in just a moment, but I want to first introduce the members of the uh, committee who are present. Uh, there are four of five members right now, uh, and I'm hoping that the fifth member can join us uh, to hollow Lord, but I'm going to the other three uh, and just uh, acknowledge that you can hear and be heard. Jennifer Taub. Yes, I can hear you. Thank you. And Bob Hegner. Present. And Councillor Ryan. I'm present. So um, we have two other uh, councillors present, and they are your district councillors, and uh, they're Lynn Griesmer and Pat D'Angelis. And I want to thank both of them because uh, as I will explain the process, uh, when we decided to, to hold a listing session, one of the important things to do was to get the word out to people who live um, in District 2, in particular in the neighborhood of Echo Hill, to uh, know that we are um, holding this session. And uh, because of their uh, list that they maintain as district counselors, um, they were extremely helpful to this process and uh, the committee really appreciates the two of them and they're both present um, and on your screen. So um, what this is about is, is uh, hopefully you know because you're present, is that uh, there's a proposal to finally address a street that has needed a lot of attention for a long period of time, which is Heatherstone. And uh, there's a very specific proposal that was made um, in March and then discussed at a meeting in March. Um, and uh, we had a lot of comment from neighbors, so it was greatly appreciated. And so uh, one of the observations, however, that was made was that uh, we were meeting as the committee normally does um, during the day and that people who uh, are unable to attend daytime meetings were not able to participate. And uh, so that essentially this is um, a meeting that is um, solely for the purpose of getting additional public comment, though it's not excluded to people who were uh, not present, anybody who offer, who wants to offer public comment may do so about the Heatherstone Road proposal. So what we're planning to do is I'm going to have um, the Superintendent of Public Works, Guilford Boring, make a brief presentation about the uh, proposal so that um, it is out there and he is um, and then, then I'll see if there are any members um, who are present, either the uh, members of the committee or for that matter, the two district councilors, if they have questions to clarify uh, the presentation, um, then I will uh, recognize those. Um, but I hope to keep that brief because the purpose then is to um, hear from neighbors um, in the Echo Hill area and others who use Heatherstone Road um, and are, um, will in, have anything that they would like to offer. So, um, and finally, let me just point out that what we will be doing as a committee is that we meet again at our regular um, time during the day on uh, at 10 a.m. on uh, May 16th, and we will um, 
at that point actually have a discussion. There is no plan for the committee to have discussion about this. This is essentially the public comment period. And then the discussion will be at our regular meeting time. And uh, it, um, it will then go back to the Transportation Advisory Committee and the Disability Access Advisory Committee because they uh, are two committees that we ask to provide input to us on a regular basis about this kind of proposal. And uh, they had postponed their uh, process of um, offering comment or even considering what comment they might offer to us until after today's listening session. And uh, so I don't anticipate that we will actually take action until uh, May 30, two weeks after the May 16 meeting, so that the two committees uh, have the opportunity to meet and talk about uh, what they might want to offer in the way of comment. So with that said, I um, ask Guilford uh, to uh, give us a brief explanation of what uh, he has proposed and uh, therefore what we are considering and seeking comment tonight. Guilford? Good evening. So uh, <clears throat> Athena has placed the drawing. Can you scroll up to the top of the page, Athena? So what we proposed is that we're going to resurface uh, Heatherstone from Pelham Road down to, could you scroll down again? I forgot the name of that street, sorry. Uh, Albinwood. So as we do this, the proposal is, is to put a crosswalk across uh, Heatherstone at Pelham Road to remove the island, median, the median island on Heatherstone Road, and then to install a sidewalk on the east side of Heatherstone. And we're also proposing that we might choose a couple of intersections, two or three intersections in here to do many roundabouts, which are roundabouts, which have islands in the middle, which are five to six feet in diameter. They're very, very small. Um, they're meant not to, they're meant not to take up a lot of space. They're meant to be small, but to make people slow down as they have to go around them. Um, and that's basically, um, that's basically the, the plan. There will be a crosswalk across each road that the sidewalk crosses in, uh, along um, Heatherstone as well. That's, that's... I don't see any uh, members of the committee who are uh, wishing to ask questions for clarification purposes. Uh, we'll go to public. Uh, I see two hands up. Uh, Jennifer. Thank you. Just a quick question. Are there, if people wanted to see what they might look like, are there any other mini roundabouts in town or in a nearby town that we could look, they could look at? Um, there, there are not, not in this area that I know of. We did provide some information, which I think got posted on the website, which actually discussed what's going on in the eastern part of the state, and that shows the dimensions of the of many roundabouts there. Um, there's several in in Portland, Oregon. And I have actually, while people are talking, I will try to find my picture of the one I got in Portland, Oregon, and put it behind me instead of the, soul, the city of Seoul. Okay, thank you, uh, Lynn. Yes, would you please describe what your plan is for the island that presently exists on the Pelham Road side of the entrance? You mean the me the median between the road? Yes. So the median's not not directly at Pelham Road, it's farther in. Um, it, it starts at um, Alpine Drive and goes south. That median will go away and the road will be paved there and it will give us room to put the sidewalk in against the, the curb. And would you also describe where you see putting sidewalks? 
the, the sidewalk will run along the entire distance we're paving, which is from Pelham Road to Auburnwood. Thank you. So with that um, said, I, uh, if there's nothing else in the way of clarification and questions from the committee, uh, we're going to open it up to public comment, which is the purpose of the evening. Um, I'm going to ask people to try and limit their comments to three minutes um, so that we can uh, um, move through and hear from different people. Um, and uh, as I say, three minutes, um, I will um, be looking at a clock and remind you if we're there. Um, but as you hear other people's comments, if there's a follow-up, then that somebody who's already spoken says, oh, I heard somebody say this, and I want to add something. We, I, I will, of course, recognize people to come back and make a second set of comments later, um, because that can happen in this kind of a meeting. And I'm going to start with uh, asking uh, Becca Watkins. Uh, to join us, and um, uh, I'm going to just uh, assume that um, you're a um, resident of, uh, and I'll say this for everybody, please uh, confirm that you're a resident of uh, Echo Hill, or even be more specific if you want about whether you live on Heatherstone, you don't have to give an exact address. Becca, welcome. Hi, thank you. Uh, I live on Heatherstone Road. Um, I appreciate you holding this meeting. Um, I spoke to this last week and I just want to reiterate it. I have, I'm very pleased that the road is getting repaved and that some traffic calming measures are being um, talked about. However, I would like to strongly urge everyone to consider reducing the speed limit on Heatherstone Road. Um, 30 miles per hour on a neighborhood road is entirely too fast. And once our potholes disappear, it's going to be an even worse problem. I'm asking the town to opt in to chapter 90, section 17C to reduce the speed limit to 25 miles per hour. Um, at the last meeting, I heard two arguments against this. One was that it had to be on a town-wide basis. Um, which is not true. It can be street by street, even though townwide is preferred. It does not have to be. And the other argument I heard was that it couldn't be enforced, which is a wild argument to me because most of our roads aren't enforced. Uh, we just do it as citizens. We generally follow the speed limit. Um, I am proposing that we reduce the speed limit to 25, add a speed radar sign with the newly reduced speed limit, and add the traffic calming measures that the town sees fit. Um, I'm really excited to see this project go forward, but I really hope we consider um, keeping our kids safe and our pedestrians safe by reducing the speed limit. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, then I'm gonna uh, ask uh, Walt Kohler to join us. Hello, thank you for uh, taking the question. So the the roads are fairly narrow uh, after the entrance. And I have a question, uh, is it gonna be required any property taking in order to install the roundabouts or the sidewalks? Gilbert, you can. For the sidewalks, we know there will not be. Um, as we look at the roundabout, there's, if we do three, there would be one property we need to take about a uh, two or three square foot piece of property off. There appear to be some electrical uh, uh, transformers in some of those spots. Have you considered the imp impact of actually having to remove some of those? Yes. The goal is not to. Okay, thank you. Sorry. Okay, thank you all. Um... Somebody named Heather. Hello. Um, hi. hi, I'm Heather Sheldon. I live up on Aubinwood. Um, Really glad that this work is being done. We were hopeful that it would be done earlier. Um, and I think the sidewalks and the calming measures seem very appropriate. Um, 
uh, for this neighborhood. I helped organize the bike to school day that happened last week, and it was a great success. And we had, well, I don't know, 20 kids from the neighborhood ride their bikes from Echo Hill to Fort River, which is a great success. Um, one of the, th and my kid rides her bike to school frequently um, from the neighborhood. And, um, you know, we actually cut over to uh, Bayberry. Uh, so this won't affect that very much, uh, but it's always great to see um, visual indicators that human beings outside of cars use these spaces as well. Um, and I think that just the more we have it, the better. Um, and of course, people do walk along there. And so I think that is all wonderful. One thing I would note is that along Pelham Road, um, between Echo Hill and Fort River, um, th there is a sidewalk, but it is hugely interrupted by mailboxes. And I'm wondering, um, it doesn't seem like there's been, there's no indication on the circulated plans. And there's only a handful of mailboxes um, within the neighborhood. Um, but I'd love to know if there's a long-term plan to also improve the connection between Echo Hill and Fort River in general, um, because there's certainly demand for that. And especially as we expand the population of that school, um, having that school be as pedestrian and bike friendly as we can make it, I hope will be a priority. Thank you. Um, Gilford, on these kinds of questions, I'll leave it to you to signal to me if you want to offer comment. And I don't think you need to under for each time. Um, but uh, I think that the next person is uh, Jeff and Marilyn Austin. So I don't know. <laughs> Please uh, go ahead and um, Jeff from Maryland, you're muted. Jeff, Maryland. I sent them a prompt to unmute, um, but it doesn't look like they're unmuted, so we can come back if okay, well, they're having technical. That. Okay, uh, and Christopher. Hi, do you guys hear me okay? Yes. Great, thanks. Good evening. Hi, I'm Christopher Budnick. I live at Aubinwood Road 239, which is at Aubinwood and Heatherstone in the Echo Hill North neighborhood with my two kids who are two and four and partner, Angela. I wanted to advocate today in favor of the complete package that y'all are proposing. Um, to Heatherstone Road. That's the sidewalk, the removal of the median, the, obviously the paving, and the pilot edition of the mini roundabouts. The details that were sent out about them looked really promising. I think that the median is a safety hazard of its own, so I'm really encouraged that its removal is part of this proposal. It is nearly impossible to safely walk uh, with kids in our stroller along that section, so we've basically had to avoid large sections of our neighborhood and the outlets that they provide to other parts of Amherst by foot or by bicycle. Last time I was out there, I measured around like 12 to 13 feet currently for like a single paved side. Um, right now, the most popular SCV is a RAV4. It has a total width of seven feet, one inch, including mirrors. I'm around two feet, four inches wide, shoulder to shoulder. I measured myself for this. And our shoulder is around two feet wide. So if we assume that a RAV4 might get as close to one or two feet away from the median while it's driving, that leaves around seven inches between us getting hit by it or not. The median space is completely unusable space for cars, meaning if they want to avoid a pedestrian, they're given less room to maneuver away. It's also unusable for families with strollers, people with poor stability, and those who use like common assistant devices like walkers and wheelchairs to explore and enjoy our neighborhood. I'm a little bit worried about the second order effects of paving Heatherstone and not implementing the recommended traffic calming measures because of the potential for, as someone mentioned before, increased throughput and speed as it becomes a more favorable stretch to commute and drive along. Lastly, I'm completely in favor of reducing the speed limit to 25 without a traffic study by taking out the Massachusetts General Laws Chapter 90, Section 17C. I know that this is an issue people have worked on for decades, <laughs> and I am in favor of taking care of this and respecting their ongoing work. And I don't want any of my comments today to hold back consensus on this issue 
as Angela and I overwhelmingly trust our neighbors here and you're on the committee safety experience and research. So I just want to thank you all for taking this up and to get, dedicating your time to this tonight. Thank you very much. I appreciate your comments, Christopher. And um, I, I'm gonna have Carol, uh, I think it's Sakura brought into the room, but uh, just to let you know that when we meet on May 30th, under the current committee plan, uh, I also uh, have scheduled that if we can do it, we are going to have, invite somebody from the police department and DPW to come back and talk with us about um, speed limits, what we can do on um, amending speed limits, not just for this street, but just generally um, townwide, what our options are and about uh, traffic calming options that are available. So that's going to be a general, um, and that was deliberately uh, placed at the same meeting so that we could uh, talk about um, Heather Stone as the final reports come back from TAC and TAAC. Um, before I go on, uh, uh, Pat Angelus, uh, Councillor. Yeah, Andy, I have a constituent who texted me some questions, but I can wait until we reach the end of the public comment period. Okay, thank you. Thank you for letting me know. Um, and then we'll come back to that. Carol? Uh, Andy, there was another um, resident in line ahead of Carol. Looks like Shoshana King. Oh, okay, I'm sorry. Shoshana? Hello, my name is Shoshona King. I am a member of the Amherst Public Shade Tree Committee. Um, I live at Rolling Green right down the hill. Um, I just wanted to express concern for excessive tree loss possible in this project and to be mindful of the fact that the character of our neighborhood is, is entrusted to these trees and uh, yeah, I just want to be mindful of that when we're moving forward with this project. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Gilford, do you have anything about trees or are there any trees at risk? Uh, mm -hmm. There's a few smaller trees that might be at risk. Most of the larger trees are actually not in the public way. They're on the private property to the west. Okay, thank you. So go ahead, um, continue in order. Uh, Ms. Cora? Please unmute. Can you hear me now? Yeah, we can hear you. Thank you. Okay. Welcome. You're welcome. Hi. So I live on 45 Alpine Drive. I agree with the speed limit of 25 and putting up postings, which I've already talked to the police department about. I think it might be better, better to put the sidewalk on the left side of the road as you exit Heatherstone onto Pelham Road, because on the right side of the road, there's a hill. And um, if there were, if there's oncoming traffic, because at that corner, there's a problem. We have a student house. Sometimes there's seven, eight cars there at a time. And if and there's a bus stop there as well on the right side of the road. So if traffic is entering onto Heatherstone from Pelham Road, um, you have parked cars, you have the bus, and then you have two sets of traffic going in and out, that's going to become dangerous, I think. Um, in the instructions, it said something about a 90 foot uh, span of road for the cul-de-sacs or the, the, the roundabouts. I guess if we have a five foot circle, that changes my opinion of the circles. Um, I thought it would be much larger. And so the, the total width of the road will be 24 feet. So if we have a bus, 
cars parked and traffic coming in two ways, there's not enough room. If okay. you could deal with that. Thank you. Okay, you're welcome. So again, uh, feel free to leave it to you uh, to let me know if you want to speak at any time. Um, Rich McLean, welcome. Thank you. Uh, I'm Rich McLean. I live at 107 Alpine. I just wanted to voice my support uh, for the plan that has been um, distributed to the community for the repaving, the removal of the median, the sidewalk, and the calming measures. Uh, I would also want to voice support for uh, changing the speed limit to 25 on that road. I think all of these measures together would make for a much safer community and a community that's much more friendly to walking and biking. Thank you. Thank you. So uh, I think the next one is Patricia Appleby. Hi, can you hear me all right? Yes, we can. Okay. Well, I had some um, carefully prepared remarks, but in the way of a meeting like this, my carefully prepared remarks uh, don't exactly fit what's going on. So um, excuse me if I'm uh, a little bit improvisational. Um, I have in the past raised some questions, particularly about the roundabouts. I want to be clear that my agenda is not to derail or obstruct anything. Um, I also want to be clear that these have been serious concerns. Um, some neighbors in private con private uh, email um, mailing lists have mentioned things like um, like trivia and mere aesthetics, and I think that uh, some concerns go beyond that. Having said that, again. Um, I can hear very clearly, and I have heard for a long time, that many of my neighbors are very concerned about speeds and sidewalks and so forth, and I have no wish to stand in the way. Um, I personally don't share some of those concerns, but I don't wish to stand in the way of something that's um, uh, strongly felt by so many people. I do want to be sure that the neighborhood knows what to expect from oncoming construction. Some of those questions have been addressed, for example, about the width of the road and about property takings. Um, finally, I have some specific questions about the roundabouts. Um, the literature that we received does say, as someone previously mentioned, that the width of a roundabout is typically 50 to 90 feet in diameter. Uh, my approximate informal measurement of the intersections shows a 45 foot diagonal across the intersection. So I don't understand where that extra five foot of diameter is going to come from, particularly if the roundabout is also going to accommodate a sidewalk. So I would appreciate some clarification on that. Um, I would also appreciate some clarification on what a temporary pilot project looks like. I understand that these are a pilot project um, um, how will it be assessed? Will somebody be tracking subsequent speeds on Heatherstone Road? Um, what person or body is responsible for evaluating the success of the pilot project? Um, how will we determine whether it should continue? Um, again, I think the community can reasonably make trade-offs, and I don't wish to be obstructionist, but I want to be clear about what we're getting into and be sure everyone understands it. Thank you very much. Thank you. Gilford, do you have any responses at this? You're muted. Actually, this her question seems to be a reoccurring question, so I'll wait until the end. And I'll bring up some stuff and talk more about how the roundabouts will fit in, if you don't mind. Great, that's fine. Absolutely. Uh, so I guess we can go ahead with Barbara Finland. Hi, oh, can you? We can hear you. Thank you. 
So Barbara Finland is my name. I live on Aubinwood, and um, I just want to say I'm a daily walker on Heather Stone. I know it very well, and I'm in full support of this whole plan. And um, really, my question is just, uh, it might kind of echo the previous one, is what is the process for evaluating whether the roundabouts have been a success? Um, if it's a pilot, how do we then know if it's something that we should stick with or it didn't work. Um, so thank you, but I'm I'm in support of the entire plan. Thanks. Okay, thank you. Uh, Tony, Penny? Hi, thank you, uh, Tony Cunningham. I live in North Amherst, actually, off East Pleasant Street. Um, I understand that Heather Stone Road's in poor shape and desperately needs repaving. And it's always great to see improved pedestrian and bike infrastructure and safety around town. My questions are more about the process and the cost. What was the process by which sidewalks on this section of Heather Stone became a top priority? There are other streets where sidewalks have also been requested for years, such as East Pleasant Street, and little progress has been made. In the 2019 Bicycle and Pedestrian Network Plan, East Pleasant Street north of Village Park was listed as the top priority for adding sidewalks. Secondly, what is the estimated cost of the sidewalks, crosswalks and roundabouts in this plan? And where will the money come from to pay for them? I assume the repaving will come out of the roads budget for this year, but what about the rest of the project? Last year, 1.3 million of town funds was allocated for road repair, repaving, and 300,000 for sidewalks. This coming year, the investment in roads has been cut to just 500,000 and sidewalks to 190,000. This does not seem to be anywhere near enough money to pay for sidewalks, crosswalks, and roundabouts. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, Jeff Marilyn, are you now with us? Can you unmute? Did I? No, hi, Jeff. Hi, sorry, my settings were wrong on my iPad before. Um, we're very enthusiastic about finally getting Headerstone paved, and we're very supportive of the speed limit change, including actually all the rest of Echo Hill. The question is, on the map, it looks like when Guilford talks about it stopping at Aubinwood Road, there's two Aubinwood Roads. Aubinwood Road is a horseshoe, and it hits Headerstone two places. Looks like where it's stopped, I want Guilford to address this. It looks from the map that where it's stopping is the first Aubinwood Road. And what follows after that is a very sharp turn. People whip around there and they find people coming out of a stop sign off of Stony Hill and turning left off of Aubinwood Road. And that's every bit as important as the rest of Heatherstone Road. Um, and it's equally in, in disrepair. Um, if there were traffic calming, that's a really important place to have it. And if there are sidewalks, that's also a very important place to have them. So I'd like to know, Excuse me, Marilyn has a question. But more importantly, we don't, if if it is not to Stony Hill Road, we don't understand why that's not part of the plan because that part of the road is truly in disrepair. So that's the question. Does it go to the second Aubinwood Road, meaning the intersection at Stony Hill um, for all of these changes, or are you stopping really before that sharp turn, which is really dangerous? And that's for Guilford, and I hope he answers this. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Uh, Gilford said he was going to come back at the end, so we'll uh, go ahead and ask Fran uh, Adams to join us. Yes, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Yeah, I'm Fran Adams. I live at 25 Echo Hill Road. I'm really glad that the Heatherstone repaving project is getting underway. I'm curious, in hindsight, have there been pedestrian versus car accidents in the last, I don't know, 20 years? I mean, I'm concerned about removing the centerpieces on Heatherstone because I think that's one thing that makes people slow down. And um, as an Arbor person, I was upset to see that the trees are already cut, of course. But I'm wondering if some of these changes are going to look like a green light for people who are likely to speed anyway. 
Thank you. Appreciate the comment. So um, no one else has their hand up at this point. Uh, Guilford, do you have any responses to anything that you've heard that you feel you can respond to today? So, yes, <laughs> sorry. <clears throat> so the, we're going to, if you're going from Pelham Road down Heatherstone, we're going to the first intersection with Avonwood. We're not going to the second intersection with Avonwood, which is where the sharp corner is and sharp turn. We're doing that because one, there's just not enough money and we're kind of, we were trying to address the worst parts of Avonwood first. Um, the part about why we decided to put the sidewalk in is basically we were going to be putting asphalt down one way or another. Um, and we thought it'd be better to shrink the road and have more sidewalk here and put a sidewalk in. That was the reason why we chose this. We often do this if we're working on a road and it's really wide, we'll try to shrink it down. Sometimes we leave nothing but grass space. Sometimes we'll put a sidewalk on it. We've done it in the past. Um, the last one we did it was up in uh, North Amherst in the neighborhood by Atkins, Atkins Reservoir. Those roads were really wide. And when we repaved it, we took about four feet off of each side of the road and shrank the road down. Um, this, this case, there's lots of there's lots of traffic and with buses and so forth that we decided that a sidewalk along would be the best way to, to to accommodate pedestrian traffic instead of just letting people walk in the road. So that's why there's a sidewalk chosen for here. Um, so it's kind of a project of opportunity. We took it up. Um, the sidewalk along East Pleasant Street is a much larger project. Uh, we've been working on trying to fit it into the layout, even though the layout's quite wide in East Pleasant Street. Um, we're still working on that, and we actually have someone who's been working nonstop on that project now for about two, three months, and he'll, hopefully he'll be working through it on the summer as well. Um, so that's a much larger, harder project to do. Um, the money will come from resurfacing money, and it will come from the, the sidewalk money as well. We have a pot of sidewalk money that's was identified, and we had a pot of road money that was identified. So both those will come from those those um, accounts. I apologize, I did not write down the price for that we have for this work, uh, and I can get that to you for the next meeting. Um, the bid has already gone out, and we do have actual prices, not estimates for this work. For the, the roundabout, I was, it, it is not, when we were talking about this, the only information that Jason, the town engineer, had on file was the mass DOT discussions about mini roundabouts, they call them. We we're actually going much smaller than what mass DOT and the Federal Highway calls mini roundabouts. Um, it's being done in Arlington. It's being done in a couple other places in the eastern part of the state. And mass DOT is on board with these <clears throat> pilots, as we as they're called. Um, I do have a video which I will send um, later that can be uploaded to your website and people can watch the video of how this uh, these roundabouts work. I didn't take a picture, I did a video. So yeah, I'll show you what we're talking about. Um, I do have one. Can I share, Athena? Yes, cool. please go ahead. So this this uh, <clears throat> information graphic you have you have here is kind of what we're going for. So you can see how small everything is. the The top one is the smallest one that has actually been done. And in Arlington, they've actually done some of these that are only four feet across in the middle, um, but they are actually tighter intersections. The goal is is that you just make a blob in the middle of the road that people have to kind of slow down to go around. And that's the goal. If you have a truck that has to go around it or go, you have to either go another route or you have to make it so they can mount it, which uh, which would probably be something like this top one here without the signs in it. The signs would be somewhere else. 
Um, so this is really what we're kind of looking for and what we're going for. They recommend that you have a 15 foot wide travel lane through here. We're gonna try to squeeze it down to a 12 foot travel lane through here. So it's really kind of a, it's really kind of a step in a, another direction for Massachusetts, Massachusetts, Massachusetts and federal highway in, in making these things. They're meant for neighborhoods. They're meant to be much smaller and to slow you down and make you go around them. Um, so if the way we'll do it here is, is we'll probably just install a, a asphalt curbing that is a Cape Cod style, which you could actually drive over and mount, you can drive over. It's called multiple curbing. Um, so trucks can mount and go over. But if you're driving your, your normal family car or even a pickup truck, you're not going to want to go over it because it's going to be a little bumpy. If you go over it, you have to really slow down to not jar yourself. So that's the goal. And this is what we're going for. Um, I think I hit everything that people were asking about. Did I forget anything? I can't think of anything right now. And Andy, could I ask my questions? Yeah, I was going to have you in just a second. Uh, one thing I wanted to say quickly is, is that uh, Gilford and I had, had a little bit of a conversation about this previously, but uh, I had, um, did raise the question and he responded to me, he said that he did not see it as a problem, and that is PVTA buses or school buses, whether that would be a problem and whether fire department would feel comfortable with the plan. Uh, so uh, I think that uh, centrally, I mean, you can respond more directly than I can, but essentially you felt that none of that was a concern that you saw as a problem. No, no I don't. Um, we try to avoid vertical deflections on the roadway to, for traffic calming. When we have PVTA, when we have fire apparatuses driving on them, those are those are raised crosswalks, those are speed bumps. We try to avoid them if that's going to be a principal route for fire apparatuses and for the buses. Like on College Street, that's not a bus route. And there's no buses that go across those speed raised crosswalks. Um, there are no fire, fire engines can get to different places and ambulances can get to different places without having to go up and down. Sometimes they do, but we try to avoid vertical <clears throat> traffic calming in those areas. And then we tried to use horizontal or deflections, which is what a roundabout is. It gives you a deflection. A chicane gives you a deflection. Narrowing the road gives you a deflection. You're having to devi deviate from your travel way and come in and slow down and then go back out. So that's kind of <clears throat> that's kind of why we chose the many roundabouts for this area. And we, we definitely know the PVTA buses can make it around these little circles. Thank you. Uh, Pat. Yeah, thank you. The, um, the questions that were texted to me is what's the timeline for actually replacing Heatherstone? How, how long will this project take? And will there be diversion of traffic onto Auburn Wood or off of Auburn Wood during the process? So the project, the, all the roads for this year's paving have already been bid. So the bids have already been taken in. The contractor has already started working. So if everything goes well and this is the route we go, this will probably be done by the end of the year. Um, and, the, and then the paving year, which is October, November. So we'll get it done by then. As in all local roads, when we're paving, we allow through traffic. And we tell the contractor he has to maintain one lane of traffic through the work site. <clears throat> so that will be what we have him do. There may be times if something goes wrong that we have to close the road, make a repair across the whole width of the road, and then let people back on the road. Um, so <clears throat> then when we're in neighborhoods like this, we try to maintain that access to everybody's house and one lane of traffic all the way through. We don't let people, although people do do it, detour through the neighborhood. Thank you. Thank you. So there are four people right now with hands up again. So I want to go back to the general public and uh, then we'll see if uh, 
Do we have anything else that we need to ask? Uh, so, um, why don't you introduce yourself uh, and uh, go ahead and make your comment. Let us know where, roughly where you live. Uh, I guess just talking to me, I'm Robert Cutting. I'm on Heatherstone. I'm at the bottom of, of um, Auburnwood, where I'd imagine where you're going to put one of these roundabouts. <laughs> and I, I'm all for the reduction of speed. Uh, so I think Patty asked about any human contacts with cars. I've had two dogs hit on Heatherstone. So I'm all for that. I know I'm bad, Patty. I don't always have my dogs on a leash. But anyway, um, my question, you mentioned that there may have to be a land taking, and you might be talking to me. Um, there's a transformer. Right? I was looking at it last night. There's a transformer on my property, and there's a street light. But from that picture you showed, it looked like maybe the circle would go mostly on Auburnwood, at the foot of Auburnwood. So I was just curious about that. Uh, and, and also, if you take a look at my driver, I'm 115. And I think I'll be backing out into that circle. Make it a little more of a challenge for me, but um, I'm all for these projects. I think it's great. I see people walking up and down, have their stone all the time. So that's my question, I guess, is how's it going to affect my driveway? Will you guys, if you have to re relocate my driveway a little bit, will you? Guys, take care of the town. Take care of that. Thanks, Guilford. Hey, Guilford, you want to just hold it until later? Yes, that's fine. Okay, then uh, we'll go back to um, Jerry. Hi, I'm Jerry Hayes. I live at 144 Heatherstone, so I'm just past where the uh, paving will end. Um, we're all very excited that something will happen on Heatherstone. Um, I think my question is, um, if the, uh, paving gods ever smile upon the rest of Heatherstone Road, um, should we anticipate that there will be a sidewalk on the rest of Heatherstone as well, or is the sidewalk just going to stop at Aubinwood? And that's my only question. Okay. Thank you. And Guilford, I'm going to assume, unless you say otherwise, that we'll just keep going in your noting questions. Um, so uh, I think we're back to some people who've spoken before. Uh, Japala. Hi, I'm not Jack, but I have an invitation to unmute. Is that, can I go ahead? Yes. Okay, I'm Patricia Applebaum. Uh, I spoke before. I live on Auburn Woodward. Um, uh, first of all, Robert Cutting, thank you for your comments. It was actually, I think, Fran who asked whether there had been any um, human car encounters, but I have wondered the same thing. I don't, I don't know of any, but um, I'm sorry about your dogs. Um, I have a follow-up question for Guilford's. Uh, a couple of us had asked earlier in connection with the roundabouts um, how the assessment of the pilot is going to take place and who is responsible for that. So thank you. Thank you. And uh, we'll come back uh, to uh, Carol Sikor and then uh, Go back to Guilford after that because I think she's uh, that's the last person to hand up. Please go ahead. Um. So, forty five Alpine Drive, Carol Scora. Can you explain, Guilford, if the road, the sidewalk is ten feet and the road is going to be narrowed to twenty four feet, how will you make sure that the students that live in the corner house do not park in the street? and that they limit their cars to four or have enough parking spots on their own property instead of going into the streets. Yeah, I think we've had a couple more hands come up, so I'm gonna just go ahead and leave it for Guilford to come back at the end. Um, so we've, I know the next person is somebody who's spoken before, but 
I did invite people to come back. You have an additional question or comment? Hi, Hi it's Robert again. Um, a question about uh, further down, like whoever that was at 144, I forget. I twisted my ankle down there walking my dog at night. Are you guys planning on filling the potholes down there or uh, paving it? I mean, seriously, I, and uh, also uh, I went to get my oil changed the other day and I need two new ball joints. So it'd be great to uh, fix those potholes. Um, and also down at the corner, I I know the owner of the uh, the multifamily. I sold it to her uh, earlier this year. I've talked to those kids. I said, you know, I come around that corner every day and someday I'm going to plow into one of your cars if you guys keep doing that. So the, the owner's been advised the current students have been advised also, you know, somebody's got a Beamer out there and I'm going to, you know, fortunately, I, I know I'm not long, no longer drinking, but it's, um, it's not good the way they park. I'll, I will talk to the owner again. Uh, they do. It is a legal two family. Maybe she can change the driveway a little bit to add six cars. You can get six, you can get um, six people in there legally. Okay, thank you. And uh, I think the last comment from Becca Watkins and then uh, ask Guilford to uh, respond and to see if we're then done for the evening. This is just purely a curiosity question, um, Guilford, that you'll probably be able to answer quickly. Uh, are three-way stop signs not an option? Are they something that requires more studies and would they be easier and cheaper and less obtrusive than roundabouts? I'm not, just a curiosity question, not advocating anything different, just wanna know. Yeah, thank you. Um, so Guilford. So I'll go to the one I missed. Uh, when, when we put things in like this and we, we want to study it, there's two ways for us to study the effectiveness of it. Um, we actually have counters. We actually have people we can send out to do traffic. At, uh, traffic. Uh, what's a good word for it? I can't say the word I use all the time. <laughs> traffic uh, research, I'll call it. Um, I have another word I use for it, but that's not the word, the correct word. Um, but we have we have staff members who know how to do it. They do um, they can do the analysis, keep track of what's going on. And then we have traffic counters, which keep track of speed and keep track of the type of vehicles and the vehicles as they pass. So in the past, for projects like this, we've deployed those ourselves and we will put them out before the work is done. And we usually put them out after the work is done. And then sometimes we'll wait six months and put them out a third time because as people get used to driving in situations, they tend to accelerate. It's uh, when you go when you go to a go kart, the go kart track, and you start go karting, uh, you're a little slow the first time. But as you drive around the circuit a few times, you get better. So that's why we do it sometimes six months later, is to account for people getting more used to driving around. Um, so that's how we'll do it. If we have some type of anomaly that we don't feel comfortable with, we have different engineers we bring in consulting engineers to help us address those situations and give us a little more um, a little more expertise and so forth. So that's how we will do the analysis. Um, if it's truly not working, we'll take them out. Um, it's just uh, we won't we'll go on and try something different. Um, for three-way stops and four-way stops, there are not recommended by most all the agencies that talk about traffic calming, they are not recommended for traffic control or speed control, or a speed control, not traffic control. They're not recommended for speed control and slowing people down. Um, what you happens is, is that you stop, you do speed up a little bit more because you're in a straight line, you're not going around or being deflected. And then you also find people who just ignore them. So, but that's the situation that's going on in Amherst Woods right now. There's a four-way stop um, 
on Wildflower and Larksboro. And the police have been sitting there and writing out a large quantity of tickets and warnings because people just drive right through the four-way stop. They're not even stopping. So um, the goal is to put something in place so that forces you to slow down and go around. Um, it, it, traffic, traffic engineering and this job would be much simpler if um, somehow we could all do what we need to do and our cars just did what they're supposed to do, um, which someone told me is happening soon, but I wait and see. Uh, so that's that's how we do the analysis, and that's why we don't use stop signs for it. Um, the students, if students are parking in the road and causing a problem, and they are basically a nuisance house then, right? We have a whole department. If you want to call that department, you can report the house to them. And as they accumulate calls and nuisance calls, they then have a harder chance of getting their rental permit renewed hopefully that's the way the rule that's the way the plan is supposed to work so there is a group in town hall and the inspection services who handle nuisance calls um, and they can you can call them and complain about the parking and that they're not following their parking plan if you look the house up in our town gis system you can find their rental permit and then you can find what was the approved parking plan um, i can guarantee that the approved parking plan wasn't spaces in the roadway they we don't that's not how they're approved. So if you talk to that department, you might be able to get some help. The driveway at 115, we're not gonna encroach on that driveway at all. Um, you will be next to it, but you'll be able to back out and, and go without being hampered by the roundabout. Um, I think that was everything. Oh. No, sorry. <laughs> so the next section of uh, the next section of the roadway to be paved when we do pave it, which may be next year, um, there will be a sidewalk continued on the on that road. It'll go all the way from where we left off, and it'll go all the way to Stony Stony Hill. That's the goal: is to bring it all the way to Stony Hill, um, and then at some point, uh, we would hopefully bring Stony Hill the sidewalk from Stony Hill down into Gatehouse and then tie it back into um, Belchtown Road. So that would give you a loop, even though the one on, Bel on Pel Pelham Road isn't as nice as it should be, that would actually give you a loop that would actually go all the way around the neighborhood, go all, go all the way to Fort River School and so forth. But that would provide a sidewalk to tie everything together. Um, I think that was all of them. Hey, yeah, thank you. So uh, I don't know if either of the district councilors wanted to say anything. If not, I'm going to take a motion from the committee to adjourn. Um, and but I want to before doing, um, Lynn, let me. I, yes, uh, we just want to urge you that if you have additional comments, you send them to us, or you go to the general comment feature uh, and leave your comments there. Thank you. And thanks for attending tonight. Yes, and I was going to conclude that before actually asking for a motion to adjourn. I want to thank everybody who's attended the meeting for um, taking the time this evening to provide your comments to us. It's most helpful. And as uh, I had said previously, uh, we will be taking this up on the 16th on Thursday and then two weeks further down the line after uh, traffic. Transportation Advisory Committee and Disability Access Advisory Committee have an opportunity to offer any comments to us if they wish to do so. And uh, uh, I'm uh, assuming that on the 30th that uh, we will go forward with our plan to also have a broader conversation about speed limits and traffic calming, which is really um, a decision that is probably in the end uh, an independent question, set of questions, but ties together and is a very important part of it and has been raised this evening and heard. Um, so um, that is what the committee's plans are. And uh, unless there's somebody else in the committee who wishes to say something now or um, otherwise we will 
reconvene on Thursday to talk about it, and I'll take a motion to adjourn. Jennifer. I I move that to that we adjourn. Okay, is there a member of the committee that seconds? Ryan, second. Okay, so uh, I'll just do a quick vote. Jennifer? Yes. And I'm um, a yes. Uh, Bob? Yes. Councilor Ryan? Aye. So it's for nothing, and I, I can uh, therefore adjourning the town um, services and outreach committee meeting. Thank you all, and good evening. Thank you.